Welcome to Seattle, Washington. My name is Susie and I've been a professional photographer here in the city for the last 10 years. Today I'm going to share with you my top 10 photo spots throughout the city. Most of these photo spots will be of the city skyline, so they'll contain the Space Needle, but not all of them. Some of the spots will be really popular that most people know about and others will be off the beaten path. So if you're ready, grab your camera and let's get shooting. So for our first spot, we're starting off with a Seattle classic and that is Cary Park. Located in the Queen Anne neighborhood of downtown, this neighborhood is north of downtown and this is where you'll find the Seattle Center, including the Space Needle, as well as the Climate Pledge Arena, which is where our brand new hockey team, the Seattle Kraken play, and much more. But Cary Park is up on the hill, so it takes a little bit of a walk or a drive to get here. But once you get here, the views are stellar, and this is where you come when you want that iconic view of the downtown skyline. And if you're lucky, you'll also get Mount Rainier views on a clear day. Definitely come here for sunset, but just know that you'll probably not be alone. So if you make it to Cary Park in the Queen Anne neighborhood, there's a few other hidden gem viewpoints that I recommend stopping by. The first is also located on Highland Drive. So from Cary Park, you can walk west on that road and you'll pass by a lot of really huge mansions. But at the very end, you'll find Marshall Park, which is where the Betty Bowen viewpoint is. This is a really small park and viewpoint, and it's not gonna give you views of the city skyline or the Space Needle, but it will give you fantastic views of Magnolia, which is a nearby neighborhood, as well as the Olympic mountain range. And across the street from the Betty Bowen viewpoint, you'll find Parsons Garden, which doesn't look super impressive right now during the winter time, but if you get here during the spring or the summer or even the fall, this is a really vibrant little park full of flowers and full blooming trees. It's really small and not many people know about it, so it's a really great place to have a private picnic or a mini photo shoot. This next viewpoint is still in the Queen Anne neighborhood, but it's located on the east side of the hill. It's called By Crack Park, which I'm not exactly sure if that's how you pronounce it, but despite the somewhat sketchy name of this park, it's not a sketchy place at all. It's a really low-key park and pretty much nobody comes here, probably because it does not give you the best views of downtown and the Space Needle, but what it does give view is an alternate view of downtown that not many people see. You get a view of the South Lake Union neighborhood, which is where the Amazon headquarters are, as well as the Google offices and Apple offices here in Seattle. And you also get a view of the actual lake and Capitol Hill. So it's just a really beautiful spot that is also really peaceful because again, not many people come here. This next spot is our last one in Queen Anne, I promise, but it's on the other side of the Queen Anne Hill and it's definitely lesser known to the point where I'm not even sure of the name of this park. I just know it because I lived on Queen Anne for so long, but it's a really awesome view of the lake as well as Fremont. So that's Gasworks Park down there. And yeah, I just love this viewpoint. So obviously you don't get Seattle skyline or Space Needle views here either, but yeah, I just love how this is a different viewpoint of the other side of downtown Seattle that people don't normally see when they come to visit. Oh, and pro tip, this is a really hot spot for the 4th of July fireworks because they happen over at Gasworks Park. So this is usually a really crowded place for 4th of July. It's a well-known fact that Amazon is headquartered in Seattle, but did you know that Expedia is also headquartered here? The headquarters are directly behind me, and they actually just moved from downtown Bellevue, which is nearby, to Seattle. And so the one good thing about Expedia coming to Seattle is that they not only built nice brand new headquarters, but they also improved the pathway and the park nearby. So this is the Elliott Bay Trail, and it actually leads all the way to Ballard if you keep going in this direction, or you can go that direction to downtown Seattle to the waterfront. It's a really great flat trail, great for biking or walking, and Expedia actually improved a section of it close to their headquarters, and they call it the beach or the Expedia beach. And so it's a really nice place to walk and hang out and catch the sunset, as well as a stellar view of downtown Seattle and also Mount Rainier. 
Another bonus is that Expedia added public parking. So at the end of this trail behind me, there's actually a parking garage that looks like it's for employees only, but there is a road down below full of free parking for the public. So I want to take a moment to give you a little photo tip. You might notice today that the weather is impeccable. It is super bright and sunny, and it's actually late February. So that should really dispel the myth that it rains all the time in Seattle, because that is totally not true. But anyway, most people think that these are ideal conditions for shooting photos. And in some ways it is, but it's actually, in my opinion, better if it's slightly cloudy and overcast out. And that's because the lighting is more neutral and the colors are a little bit more saturated. And it's just a lot easier to take photos, especially landscape or cityscape photos. So the bottom line is it doesn't have to be super sunny and bright out to get good photos. If it's cloudy and gray and even raining a little bit, then it's actually okay, if not better, to go out and take photos. In fact, if you want to know my absolute favorite time of day to take photos, it's not sunrise, it's not sunset, but I'll let you know in this video right here. For this next viewpoint, we're here at Gasworks Park, which is named for these gas tower things behind me, which are abandoned and off limits, but they make for really interesting photo compositions. But the real thing that we're interested in here is the view. So as you can see, Gasworks Park is definitely known for its city skyline views. You can get really awesome views of downtown and the Space Needle, as well as Capitol Hill and Queen Anne. And it's just a really lovely place to get views. But more importantly, it's a really great place just to come and relax and hang out with your friends. For our next viewpoint, it's a little bit noisy because I'm right over the I-5 highway. But we're here on Belmont Avenue North, which is leading up to Capitol Hill. And this is a really great spot to get an alternate view of the Space Needle in downtown that's not from Queen Anne. Queen Anne is actually the hill right behind me. That's where we got a majority of our views leading up to this point. But from here, you get nice views of the Space Needle, Queen Anne Hill, as well as South Lake Union, and even I-5. This can make for really great long exposures or light trails after the sun sets. Next, we're gonna head up into Capitol Hill and get another viewpoint from further up on the hill. For our next viewpoint, we're here on top of Capitol Hill at Volunteer Park. This is a really nice little park with a little running and walking trail. It's also home to the Seattle Asian Art Museum, and it has a little peekaboo view of the Space Needle. So if you come to shoot here, definitely bring a long lens if you want to get a good shot. But it's also just a great place to come and enjoy the museum or come and enjoy nature. There's also a conservatory, it has a small little fee to enter, but it's full of plants and it's also really warm, so a great place to warm up and take some nice photos. But yeah, this is just a little hidden gem part of Capitol Hill that is great for relaxing. And for our final viewpoint, we're over a freeway again, so I apologize for the noise, but we're here at the Jose Rizal Bridge, which is in the southern part of downtown Seattle, just south of Chinatown. So at this bridge, you get a really nice southern-facing view of downtown Seattle. So no space needle, but you do get parts of Pioneer Square, including Smith Tower and Columbia Tower. Columbia Tower is actually the tallest building in downtown Seattle. And you also get some views of the fields. They keep changing their names, so I forget the names of them. T-Mobile Park, I think, which is where the Mariners and the Sounders, Mariners play. And also, not CenturyLink, Lumen Field, which is where the Seahawks and the Sounders play. The only thing to note about this bridge is not only is it a little noisy because of the traffic, but there's also some sketchy activity around it, if you know what I mean. So just be very aware of yourself. But generally speaking, being here on the bridge, there's you know lots of other people around if it's during a prime time of day, such as sunrise or sunset. So you'll often see other photographers here, and that gives you a little bit a uh, sense of security. But do be careful if you come to shoot here. Oh, and a little tidbit, this is the former Amazon offices or headquarters that used to be right here, but they're now in South Lake Union, downtown Seattle. Welcome to West Seattle. So as you can see, we are quite a bit further away from downtown Seattle, which is right behind me. But as a result, we get a really nice expansive view of downtown by coming over to West Seattle. Now getting to West Seattle can be a little bit tricky if you're coming by car because the main way to get here was via the West Seattle Bridge, but that's been closed down for the last couple of years. Uh, they are eventually planning to reopen it, but until then, it's a bit of an adventure to get to this part of Seattle. So the other way to get here is through the West Seattle Ferry. It actually just pulled in 
down there. So there's the ferry terminal. So you can catch the ferry from downtown and get off over here. And catching the ferry is quite a nice experience. It gets you out on the water, gives you really great views of Elliott Bay and downtown Seattle. And it also brings you to West Seattle itself, which is a really nice neighborhood. A lot of people live here, but there's also a nice long flat path, which you can walk, run, bike ride on, and it takes you down to Alki Beach. And just a half mile long beach has actual real sand on it and on a day like today it feels like paradise well it's now midday i've been shooting for pretty much all morning to get all of these uh, scenic shots and my battery of my camera is about to die so it's perfect timing but yeah thank you for coming with me on this journey to 10 of my favorite spots to shoot photos around seattle hope you enjoyed it please hit the like button if you did and subscribe for more content my partner martin and i have been living here in seattle for the last decade plus so we know a lot about our city we make lots of videos about seattle and also the surrounding area areas of the Pacific Northwest. So subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.